Okay, this is a quick video just to show how to use strain on the Vivid machine. So you need to start with an apical three chamber, so the apical long axis. Okay, and we need to make sure that it's at the right frame rate. So let me just put my uh, trackpad on. So frame rate here is 57 frames per second. So we need to make sure that we've got that accurate. Um, so what I'm going to go to do is go to measure and here on our measure um, menu is AFI and that is the strain analysis. So we're going to click AFI and it tells us in what order to do the measurements. So you can see here we have apical long axis is the first one. So I'm going to click on that and it will auto track. Now, if you're not happy, you can move just like you would on the Auto Simpsons. But I'm pretty happy that that has tracked the endocardial border. So we can either just leave it alone and it will process or you can just be impatient and press the process button. Now, what we can see here is that the auto tracking hasn't actually worked very well because it can't see any of the posterior wall very clearly. So if you get these little red crosses, that means it hasn't picked it up. So we're going to recalc and we're just going to move that a little bit further into the myocardium just so it can pick up a better speckle and hopefully give us a better image. So reprocess. And here we have a full set of green ticks, which says that it's managed to track every segment on this one. So we're happy, we're going to approve. Now on the apical long axis, we also have to find the closure point of the aortic valve. So we're going to scroll through. And most of the time it has its own auto track of that. And in this case, it's accurate, you can see it matches up with the green line. So I'm quite happy with that. So I am going to set. Okay, so this is our first um, tracking um, of the apical long axis. It gives us you your strain map. It gives you your strain curves. It shows you that how it's tracked and the color strain, and it gives you your peak systolic strain here as well. So we're going to go to the next image, which was the apical four chamber. We want the same frames per second. So here we go. There's an apical four chamber. Again, 57 frames per second. We're going to measure AFI, apical four chamber. And hopefully that will track. That looks like it's tracked pretty well. So we're just going to let it process and see if we're happy. No, so the apical lateral hasn't tracked very well, so we're gonna go back in and see if we can't get that to come down a little bit over here. Maybe just bring it in a little bit. Maybe not quite that much. Okay, and reprocess. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so we have a full set of green ticks, so we're happy that it's managed to track the myocardium. In this case, you just approve and we go straight to our map. Okay, so we're going to store that. And lastly, we're going to go to the apical two chamber. We're going to do the same thing again. So apical two, which is here. Again, 57 frames per second. Measure, AFI, apical two chamber. Okay, I'm quite happy that it seems to have tracked quite nicely there. Let's see what it says. No, the apical inferior hasn't tracked, so we're going to recalc and possibly just move that over a little bit, see if it can track that a bit better. I'm not sure this is the best image. We can always try a different one. Let's process and see what it comes out at. Nope, still having trouble, so I'm going to exit there and I'm going to go and look for a different apical two chamber, maybe one with a better apex, clearer apex. So let's have a look. I do believe I've got one a little bit earlier on. Okay, so this looks like a better apical two chamber. Let's click on that one. And we'll go measure, AFI, two chamber, 
just going to add, just bring that up into the apex. It does tend to not track the apex very well, just like on the Simpsons, um, as Raj was saying. But like I said, we can change the measurement and we'll just let that auto process. Okay, full set of green ticks. I'm happy with that. I'm going to approve. And instead of getting the individual map, we get the three um, strain curves, set of strain curves for each of the windows, and we get the bullseye here. This is the interesting one. And the number we're most interested in is the GLPS average, which here is minus 20. Uh, we can clearly see that this patient has good systolic function, and minus 20 is a good global longitudinal strain. So I like to store this image. And then when you go to exit, it asks if you want to store the bullseye. Say yes, because this is what stores it into your worksheet. So say yes, it will store your bullseye, store all your measurements. And that is how you measure strain rate on the Vivid.